welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. Right now, for me at least, it's the first week of August 2016, which means that a few days ago the deadline passed for getting a free upgrade to Windows 10 from either Windows 7 or Windows 8.1. Now, as you may know, the free upgrade period lasted a whole year, and during that year, the majority of Windows 7 users chose not to upgrade to Windows 10. In this video, I'm therefore going to ask what's next, what is the road ahead for all users of Windows 7, including myself. Right, I thought we'd start out with some key dates, and there's three of them. The first date is the one I've just mentioned, which is that on July the 29th, 2016, the free upgrade to Windows 10 came to an end. So now if you want to go from Windows 7 to Windows 10, you'd have to pay Microsoft at least $100. The next key date, maybe the least significant, is October the 31st, 2016. This is the end of OEM Windows 7 sales. In other words, after the 31st of October 2016, original equipment manufacturers won't be able to sell computers with Windows 7 on them. Now, the chances are they'll still be able to offer downgrade rights, so you can buy one with Windows 10 and downgrade it to Windows 7, but that's going to get more and more difficult, at least outside of a large company, after the 31st October 2016. The final key date, the absolutely critical one, is January the 14th, 2020. This is the end of Windows 7 extended support. In other words, after January the 14th, 2020, there'll be no updates to Windows 7. There'll be no updates for security, that, that type of thing. So I think we all have to accept that after 14th of January 2020, we're all going to have to make a decision. We're all going to have to move away from Windows 7. Right, I thought it might be useful to look at the current market share of different PC operating systems. It's difficult to get exact figures, but there's a couple of companies people tend to rely on. The first is StatCounter, and in June 2016, the last figures we can get available at the moment, StatCounter said about 20% of people were running Windows 10, and about 38% of people were running Windows 7. The other company people turn to is NetMarketShare, who do a bit more sample bias correction. And they said at the same time, about 19% of people were running Windows 10 and about 49% of people were running Windows 7. So I think we can say with reasonable certainty that about 20% of people are currently running Windows 10, about 40% plus are running Windows 7, and another 40% are running some other operating system, an older version of Windows, Windows 8.1 perhaps, maybe, maybe Windows Vista out there somewhere, Windows XP, or they're running Mac operating system or Linux or something like that. Now, when Microsoft launched Windows 10, its stated intention was to get a billion people using its new operating system within a few years. Right now, if you take the figures most in Microsoft's favor, about 350 million people are running Windows 10, which means a good 700 million people are still running Windows 7. Windows 7 is still, by anybody's figures, the most popular PC operating system. And the fact that all those people could have upgraded to Windows 10 for free and chose not to and had a whole year to do it, all they had to do was click a button basically, beats to me, I think it's incredibly unlikely that hundreds of millions of people are now gonna pay at least $100 to Microsoft for the privilege of going to Windows 10. So Windows 7 is a very solid user base. It's gonna stay there for a long time, at least another three years as we've seen. And I think we are at a sort of turning point. People are not as keen as they were to sort of stay with a Microsoft machine. And therefore we really do have to say what will happen in three years time or over the next three years with all those users of Windows 7. So we can ask various questions. One of the questions is, are we all stupid? Are, are, are lots of us very stupid indeed? We didn't upgrade to Windows 10 when we could have done. And indeed, if you read the popular computing press, there was a very strong movement there saying, move to Windows 10. If you read somewhere like Wired, you know, a very reputable source, if you read Wired on the 29th of July, 2016, it was saying, um, should I upgrade to Windows 10 on your last opportunity? Short answer, yes. The slightly longer answer, 
Definitely yes. And I can show you lots and lots of computing websites and other definitive sources that said you should go to Windows 10. And I should make it clear, Windows 10 is a good operating system. It is nice and nice and sleek. It's got, a, I think, a much better look than some of the previous versions, although you can't change the look as you could in previous versions. Um, Windows 10 you know, works pretty stably on, on lots of different hardware. You know, there's lots of good reasons for using it. And you've seen me use it on this channel. I was running it on a single board computer last week. I very much enjoyed that. I do like, in many ways, using Windows 10. But like a lot of people, I've chosen not to switch to it on the PCs I rely on to do my work. So something's going on here. Either, as I say, a lot of us are very, very stupid. We couldn't actually take all the good advice and move to Windows 10. Or there is a disconnect opening up between the popular computer press and the computing industry and an awful lot of users. And I think this sort of separation between the establishment and everybody else, which we see in so many other parts of our world these days, particularly in politics, is what's going on in computing. There is one direction being sort of hailed, but we must all go that way, we must all get Windows, Windows 10 by being pushed by the industry, but by the, by the press. And a lot of us going, I'm not quite sure about that. And that isn't saying Windows 10 is terrible, but there are reasons not to go towards it. And I think, you know, people are, are caught in that. We really, we can see reasons to do it. Many people, I think, will regret not getting the free upgrade and having to pay the money. But a lot of us are really steadfast in our position of why we didn't go to Windows 10. So why didn't we upgrade? Well, for a lot of people, I think it was about control. Windows 10 can monitor a lot of people's activity. Uh, it will monitor your keystrokes by default. It will send all the information back to Microsoft. It will monitor your voice just to listen out for things and also process that information back in the cloud over with Microsoft. It will learn about you by default using the Cortana um, Virtual Assistant. And if you look at the latest version of Windows 10, the one that's launched this week, the anniversary update, you can't turn off the Cortana Virtual Assistant. You can turn down what it does a lot, but you can't entirely opt out of that. So I think a lot of people object to Windows 10 from that point of view. The idea that Microsoft may be spying on them. Lots of information is being sent back to Microsoft. Windows has become a service, not an operating system. And many people, to some extent myself, are unhappy about that. From my own point of view, I was more concerned about control in terms of what the operating system does and when. You know, you can't with Windows 10 choose when you install your upgrades, or at least you can delay them a bit, but you have to take every update Microsoft issues. So if there's something that conflicts with your graphics card or something, that's tough. Microsoft throws it at you, there might be a problem, it will, I'm sure, fix it in time. But if you're trying to get some work done and suddenly an upgrade hits and you can't change it, you can't get out of that, what do you do? Very much, we surrender control with Windows 10. And that is the reason I think so many of us have gone, we don't really want to use it. So where do we go next? Well, there are various choices. In the next three years, we could all stick running Windows 7. And I'm sure a lot of people will eke out Windows 7 for three more years. But we also all know that won't last forever. We either have to go the Windows 10 route, or we have to find something else. And there are other operating systems now starting to, to float around. Things like React OS is one coming along. There is, of course, also Linux. And I think a lot of people are in a sort of pre-transition to Linux. Uh, as you might have said on this channel in, in recent videos, I'm starting to think, could I survive outside of Windows? Now, this is tricky. If I simply want to do things like office work, use a word processor, use a web browser, make presentations, that kind of stuff, a bit of audio editing, video playback, that type of thing, it's easy. You can switch to Linux straight away. But if you're doing high-end video editing, compositing work, that sort of stuff, it's more difficult. If you play lots of games, it's more difficult. The Windows platform lock locks people in. And so I think we're in this sort of transition of trying to go, well, how can we get from where we are to where we're going? And we're sort of hoping that the market is going to keep up with us. And by 2020, uh, we won't have to transition. Now, it could well be that Microsoft relents a bit and does a version of Windows that isn't so much of a service. I don't think that's going to happen. I think we are at the beginning of the end of Windows as, as we've known it. Microsoft have already said that to some extent. There won't be a Windows 11. It'll continue to evolve. Can it be called Windows 10 forever? I very much doubt it. But it's going to not change in the way it has changed in the past. 
And I think this will push more and more people towards the Linux or other alternatives. In 1993, Bill Gates here at Microsoft published uh, this book, The Road Ahead, a book in which he spectacularly failed to really appreciate the impact of the internet on the world. The book asked lots of interesting questions. Questions like, um, will I have to learn to use a computer? Will my job become obsolete? These were the key questions of this book, nothing to do with internet stuff at all, and yet of course we're on the verge of the internet revolution. Now, I mentioned this book because the road ahead now, I think, is another fundamental turning point, just as it was in 93 with a real takeoff of the PC and then the real takeoff of the internet. I think the takeoff point for major changes towards attitudes to software and attitudes to global companies like Microsoft who ex really exploit global monopolies in terms of, of operating system. I think people and companies are getting a bit fed up with that. So, I'm interested to know, what is your view on this? I haven't got an answer for you today what will happen with, with BitWars on, on Windows 7. Sorry about that. From my personal point of view, I think I will gradually go over to, to Linux over the next three years. Hopefully, if I can find the professional software to keep up with me in terms of video editing, um, probably DaVinci Resolve, and things like compositing and audio and stuff like that. But uh, what is your view? Where are we going to go? Please let us all know down in the comments section down there with lovely old Bill Gates. and. Uh, I hope to talk to you again very soon.